Hello everybody, here I have a perfect duo. These two work as a team and should be sold together with an option to buy each separately. This would make people think before they make a decision to buy one. To prove my point, look at this Amazon review. Somebody purchased a clamp meter and he says that it is a child's toy. Does absolutely nothing. Two people even found this review helpful. They will not buy it. It is junk. Or is it? In his video, he measures voltage on the line supplying power to a heater that is actually running. The meter reading is 0 volts and he knows that the heater is plugged into 240 volts circuit. When he switched to DC amps function, why DC? Don't ask me. The meter displays random numbers close to zero. And he is not alone. Here is a review by another customer. And while the meter reads correctly 230 volts, 50 Hz frequency, the current measuring function doesn't work. The water is boiling. Yes. In Europe, they run electric kettles on 230 volts. The current drone reads zero. Once again, two people found this review helpful and they will not purchase this meter brand. Let's go back to our perfect duo and check what works and what doesn't. And why pairing a clamp meter with this thing on the left makes the perfect match. I will begin with voltage measurements. Here we have a circuit where an electric bulb is connected to a DC power supply. To measure voltage, which is defined as electrical potential difference, we plug in a voltmeter parallel to the circuit between any two points without interrupting the circuit. And what I mean is opening the circuit to hook up the meter. Interrupting the circuit by voltmeter is a different story related to internal impedance of the meter. To make life easier, let's forget about it for now. We can even measure voltage drop between any two points on the supply line. Even though we use good conductors for the wires, like copper, we still have resistance in the line. The conductor consists of multiple resistors along the way. We will come back to the voltage drop on the conductor section later. To measure voltage, we can use not only voltmeters or multimeters switched to a voltage function, but we can use a clamp meter. To measure voltage with the clamp meter, we plug in test leads to terminals on the meter. We don't use the clamp for this purpose. Turn the function into volts, in this case DC. And we have readings about 20.8, 20.9 volts DC. Another clamp meter and all readings are close between them. When I switch the meter to AC voltage, I get readings of zero voltage. Good power supply. No AC component present. It is a different story when we wish to measure current in this circuit. To do so, we use an ammeter and this time we must interrupt the circuit to plug in the ammeter in series. The problem here is not only that we must interrupt the circuit, but we have to deal with the limited capability of the meters. This one here can measure up to 20 amps, but only for 10 seconds. And we must let it cool down for 15 minutes. We cannot monitor current changes in time, 10 seconds only. 
This one is good for up to 15 amps. And again, 15 minutes rest. Unfused. Scary. This one, 10 amps. Obviously, not continuously. To go around this problem, we can use a shunt. I already told you about the voltage drop on the line section. The shunt is just a big resistor. Big in size, tiny in resistance. Since, in theory, shunt resistance is constant, the voltage drop will be proportional to the current running through it, Ohm's law. This shunt can handle 50 amps, and the voltage drop at this level will be 75 millivolts. To plug in the shunt into the circuit, we must open the loop and hook it up in series. Then we hook up the voltmeter parallel with the shunt. The bulb is lit. The current runs through the shunt. 1.95 amps. Depending on the switch position on the power supply, we read volts or amps. In this circuit we read 2.9 millivolts on the shunt. For 50 amps we would have 75 millivolts voltage drop. So when we read 2.9 millivolts we can calculate amperage related to this voltage drop. And we get 1.93 amps. When we use a multimeter to measure current, in the reality we measure voltage drop on a small internal shunt. Through the multimeter guts it is calculated for us and displayed conveniently in amps. The shunt is tiny, so it cannot hold high current for too long without burning down. Problems with opening the loop to hook up ammeters or shunts disappear when we use a clamp meter. How does it work? In the case of AC measurement, it works like a transformer. No, not this type of transformer. This type of transformer. When an electrical current flows through a wire, a magnetic field is induced around it. When we are dealing with AC current, an electromagnetic induction generates an electric current inside a coil that is built into the clamp. Same as in a transformer where we have primary and secondary winding. No electrical connection between the two. In the case of the clamp meter, the primary is the wire with the current flowing in the circuit that we would like to measure. And the secondary coil is inside the meter loop. Here we can see the core of the coil. In case of DC current, a Hall sensor is built in besides the coil. Not every single clamp meter can measure DC current. And those equipped with the Hall sensor are more expensive. We must remember that in order to measure the current, we must use separate wire. The current flows only in a closed circuit. When we pair two wires to do the measurement, the opposite magnetic field will cancel each other and we will read zero. In this example the bulb is drawing about 1.95 amps according to the power supply display and the ammeter plugged into the circuit. The clamp meter reads 1.93. Clamp meters are less accurate because they can pick up interference. Therefore, we must zero the meter in the area before clamping it on the conductor. 
Other meters read over 2 amps. So don't be surprised by the fluke price. To measure current drawn by appliances, we use a line splitter. Obviously, we have situations where the wires are separate already. Like in electrical panels. Or a car where we can measure the current that alternator is charging the battery. The current drawn by the starter. The current drawn by the car systems with headlights on and off. Welding current where we can hook up the clamp meter on the ground cable. Around 90 amps. In this line splitter we have points where we can measure voltage as well. One section holds the neutral wire, hot one in the second. Here it passes once. And here there is a loop where it passes 10 times. We will see why later. Even though the voltage is around 120 volts, no current is present in the wire. When I turn on the appliance, here the power supply, it pulls around 0 0.71, 0 0.72 AC amps. The bulb is lit and it draws 1.95 amps from the power supply. When I clamp the meter into the 10 times loop, it shows 7.17 amps. The times 10 loop is a multiplier that allows us to make more accurate measurements. Just remember to shift one decimal place to the left. When I skip the splitter and measure the current directly on the cable, it reads zero. But we know the appliance is on and it draws some current. Let's check other meters on the AC line. Close enough. What? Sweet. Bah. Not good. Almost perfect. No comment, but bravo, Mastercraft. I have made a Celine Dion type line splitter. All by myself. Please don't ask me how to make one. If you don't know already, don't even try. When done, we can test it if we didn't mess up the wires order. Grounding should read zero. All good. I prepared an extension with a split hotline. Yeah, I went bananas. Here is the connection diagram I have now.
the power supply is on. In the electrical outlet we have AC current, so the meter reads zero in DC current mode. When I switch to AC mode we read about 0 0.72. Clamp meter reads 0 0.72. On the multiplier loop, we have a difference on the third decimal spot. Boiling water, there is 10.80 amps. Over half amp higher. like the fluke. Almost. Ten point eight. If clamp meters were sold as a kit with line splitters, maybe people would think for a moment why and then discover how to use them properly. I will end up with a quiz. Here we have a meter plugged into the circuit in a proper way. What is it? Is it ammeter or voltmeter? Let me know in the comments. Till next time.